All right, we have our next round of supports on our way to, well, as close to 100% as we can get. I know we have some people who are dead here in this run. Um, Let's start off with Loot and Ross. Hey, you. I hope that maniac isn't talking to me. I'll pretend I can't hear him. La la la. <laughs> okay, this is adorable already. You, over there, mage woman. Are you talking to me? I think so. Firstly, my name isn't mage woman, nor is it you. <laughs> Why don't you lower your voice and act a little more civilized? Who are you? I like the fact that they've been in the same army fighting alongside each other for so long and she doesn't know who he is yet. <laughs> that is amazing and also perfect for her character, I think. I'm son of the warrior Garcia, Ross. So you're son of warrior Garcia, Ross. That's an unusual name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it is. I'm Loot, genius mage extraordinaire. You've probably heard of me. <laughs> so, sir, son of a warrior Garcia Ross, how may I be of service to you? <laughs> Is she just messing with him or does she act? No, with Loot, I think she, I'd, I can really see it going both ways. My name is Ross. You're kind of weird. Hey, you can use magic, right? She did just say that. Yes, although to be more accurate, I don't just use magic. I'm a master of all magic. Well, that's just explicitly not true. You are not a master of light magic. You are not a master of dark magic. And also you're not a master of healing magic, though you can use it. Please don't make that mistake again. Wow, that's really great. Well, maybe for you. For me, I'm just that good. It's normal. <laughs> Isn't it hard to remember all those spells? Well, I think for the average person, it probably is a difficult task. But for me, it is as simple as using a hint of fragrance when baking a cake. Can, can you also bake? I have no idea what you mean. Wait a second. Does that mean I, even I could learn magic? I... Uh, well... Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, at least pretend to ponder the question for a little bit before you answer. Okay, bye. <laughs> I love him. Loot always has some of the bests. Hey, wait a minute. All right, Seth and Natasha. Oh, General Seth, how do you do? Sister Natasha, good day to you. I appreciate the care you uh, give our wounded, but be sure to care for yourself too. I heard about what happened the other day. It would have turned out bad. It could have turned out badly. I'm sorry to have worried you. When I see an injured person, I must help. I seldom think of the consequences to myself. I shall be more careful in the future. Grotto doesn't know what they've lost, Natasha. You're indispensable to us. If you were injured, our entire strategy could be slowed or lost altogether. I mean, she's more valuable than just her contribution to the army. Take care of yourself first, and worry about us later. Seth, you are the one who is indispensable, far more than I am. He is a very, very high quality knight. Or was. He has been overtaken, though. You race into danger, acting as a decoy or rescuing people alone. But yeah, what he lacks in strength, he more than makes up in his dedication to protecting Irica. You're the one who is reckless. I wish you would watch yourself. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I'd been causing you so much worry. I promised to be less reckless, but you don't do anything. Uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Uh, well, don't do anything you would do either if uh, you're running in danger. Yes, General. 
May you be guided to safety. Well. Oh. Yeah, it was just a little sweet. Now, Laura Shells, she is another one who always has amazing supports. Good day to you, princess. What a funny thing that we should meet here. It is Providence, I tell you. Laura Shell, it is not Providence. It's not even a coincidence. <laughs> We agreed to meet here when we planned out our battle strategy. <laughs> Providence, she dare say. Wait, don't tell me that you don't remember that. We planned this? I suppose I simply don't usually worry about such trifling details. <laughs> Lord shows the best. And here we are. So I suppose that our plan must be working. I suppose you're right. Still, divine providence or not, isn't it strange and wonderful? A beautiful princess traveling with such a ragged bunch as this. You're talking about yourself, right? You could have told me much sooner, you know. Oh, talking about Irika. My apologies. Necessity demanded that I conceal my, uh, my identity at the time. Oh, it is no longer any worry. To be honest, I believe I had figured out your ruse from the mo very moment we met. I said to myself... This lovely woman could only be of my own superior breeding. <laughs> oh god. After all, you can never truly fool a woman with my keen mind. I'm... Um, press X to doubt. My, how impressive. There's simply something about nobility that simply... There's something about nobility that simply cannot be hidden from its kin. Why, Irika? Certainly, you must have felt the same thing upon seeing me. Um. Yeah, I certainly did at the very least. I could sort of feel it. Definitely felt you were special. You surely saw a refinement and grace of carriage surpassing that of common folk? You were certainly eccentric, at least. Er. <laughs> yes, why? The very first time I met you, I could see that you. Oh no, you are very far from common. <laughs> it's very true. Exactly, far from common. I could not have put it better myself. Best she doesn't know what you mean. It's simply impossible to travel incognito these days. And, oh, oh. Molder with Vanessa. Vanessa, how are you holding up? Father Mulder, we are struggling, but I'll pull house I'll pull through somehow. Say, Father Mulder. You want to know about Prince Ines, don't you? He's doing well. <laughs> yeah. I was worried for a moment, but he'll be fine. Oh wait. Oh, you're saying Prince Enos was injured at in one of these battles. Fair enough. Oh, I, uh, thank you. How did you know? Well, you see, as a priest, I've met people from all walks of life. Some of them like you, well, I can read them like an open book. You, you can read my mind? That's so embarrassing. Don't worry, he can't actually garner your inner thoughts. It's just, well... Sometimes your intentions can be obvious. No, no, it's nothing like that. I simply mean you're a pure, straightforward girl. It's a compliment worthy of a knight. So do you... do you think so? Thank you, father. Hmm. Say, would you like to hear a story from the prince's youth? I like that, father. Very much. <laughs> hmm. Oh my, you know, I think we'd better take care of our enemies first. Look out, over there. Stay here, father. I'll take care of this. Yes, I think that would be best. Tell me your story another time, though. I'd like to hear it. I'd be delighted. Another time, then. Yes, father. Well, I look forward to hearing the story. All right, off to the next one. All right, round two. Ross and Loot. 
let us go. Hey, mage lady. I mean, uh, let's see. Loot! Good job. Good job. Hello, Sir Son of Warrior Garcia Ross. <laughs> let's be honest here, Ross. That name is so much better. It's Ross! You left in the middle of the conversation. Thank you, but it's no big deal. Wait, what? what's not a big deal? That wasn't a compliment! So, by the way, I got, I'm tempted to make this my actual uh, end game pairing for, for these two. This time, last time we did Archer and Loot, and that was fun, but... So long. <laughs> yes. What the heck? Hey, wait a minute. I was telling you not to leave suddenly. What do you want? Well, nothing in particular. I just thought we could chat or something. But that doesn't sound very productive, nor strategically important. But if you want to, please go ahead. Good job, Ross. You got her to stay. Okay, um, let's see. What to talk about? Mm. Ooh, wasting Loot's time there, Ross. That's, that's no good at all. You know, my mom used a little magic too. She passed away a while ago. But that's why I thought I might be able to use magic too. Last time, you said no right away, but you hadn't heard the whole story. She, she can see you though. Do you want to be a mage? No, not exactly. Well, you should keep following uh, your own instinct instead. Everyone has his or her own talent. I figure the path you are taking now is appropriate for you. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, it's not like I was torn between the two or anything. I kind of just wanted to talk with a female mage like you. Thanks. Very specific kind of person you want to talk to, but okay. Um... You're welcome, I guess. I'm glad I could be of, a ser uh, be of your service. <laughs> I like their conversations. Loot, like I said, Loot always has great conversations. I still remember the one about her spider prank with the Arthur. <laughs> She's Loot. Um, okay, all right. Irika and Lorishel. Take that. And that, and that, and that! What are you doing? Lower shell? What are you doing? I'm practicing. I want to be prepared for when those fiends next show up. What are you going to do to them? You never can tell where or when they'll appear, after all. Talking about the monsters? Well, there are some right over there. And if they were to appear, appear and I were unable to prepare a magical attack? Well... I'd like to be ready to whack them with this staff of mine. Oh, hey. You know... Uh, didn't... Wasn't that what they did in, um... Path of Radiance? In Radiant Dawn, they whacked them with the staff? It wasn't very effective or anything, but... I think they did that. It's been a long time. God, it has been how many years... Since I played Radiant, uh, Path of Radiance like six or seven now. Jeez. Uh, don't you think that's a bit, well, dangerous? Perhaps you should stop. If monsters appear when I'm around. I promise I'll come to your aid. That's simply no good, Irika. You know how those monsters can be. I insist that I be able to hold my own, relying on nothing but my skills. I've been curious about something, Laura Shell. Why are you so obsessed with fighting monsters? Uh, it has something to do with her ancestor, I think. She wants to be a hero. My parents were kind people. I'd be like them if I were... I would be like them if I were... Uh, if I'm able. My home of Rustin is so near to Darkling Woods, we experienced many sudden raids. My parents took it upon themselves to defend our people against the monsters. I had no idea. Yes, but my parents are gone now. Ah, uh, right. Which is why that guy was... It was your uncle. 
I've been told that they passed away when I was but an infant. They gave their lives defending many helpless people. I'm so sorry. Oh, you needn't be sad. I would not want for that. No, it's wonderful that they gave their lives battling that filth. I was so young that I do not remember their faces, if I must be honest. However, it does not diminish the pride I feel for what they have done. Don't you feel lonely at the loss of your parents? I imagine so. Oh, no? No, not at all. What do you take me for? Some kind of weakling? No, I see that you are strong indeed, Lower Shell. I think she's uh, trying to hide her sadness there. I should say so, but would you not say that you are strong too, Irika? Your father stayed in his castle, fighting the forces of Grotto. He had, a, he had a noble death, don't you think? I suppose so. Your father was a great man. You must be quite proud of him. Perhaps, though I imagine she would prefer that he was still by their side. Well, yes. He refused to take even one step in retreat from the advancing Grotto soldiers. But still... I mean, I... I would have thought no less of him if he had fled. Even if he were no longer a brave king. Still... Yeah. Holding his ground wasn't worth losing him. I'd be happier if he were still alive. Irika... I do understand you. Everyone would tell me my parents' bravery, uh, of my parents' bravery, of their honor. But I still never see them. I will never know them for myself. That's just tragic. But I imagine losing them before you could even remember them probably actually makes it easier. If I had to guess. Oh, what I would give if I could have met them just once, but it's still incredibly tragic. Lower show. Man. Alright. Natasha and Seth. The previous one was a bit generic, but see how this one is like. Sister Natasha, are you all are you well? I heard you collapsed last night. Maybe you should rest more, instead of risking yourself on Oh, General Seth. I'm sorry about that. We had many wounded, and I trained myself healing them all. However, I rested well last night, and I have fully recovered. I'm sorry for giving you so much cause to worry again. <laughs> oh boy. You and Irika, what am I going to do about you? You seem hellbent on throwing away your lives in this conflict. Well. Oh, I see. I always become a liability in battle. All I do is cause you worry and concern. You're always the first to race into battle to heal an injured person. You really should wait till you have proper protection. Or better yet, wait for them to retreat to you. Do you know what the others have started calling you? Oh no. What kind of nickname? They're calling me names? They've taken to you call to calling you the Healing Spirit. Oh, well, that's not too bad a nickname. A Healing Spirit? Oh no. I'm far from it. Why, I... When you first joined us, I was not sure I could trust my life to you. You're from Grotto, and we've seen the treacheries of which they are capable. Well, I mean, she specifically betrayed Grotto. But I've watched you, and I know now that I was wrong. I'm grateful for the kindness and compassion that you've shown uh, that you showed us all. I meant her right. You are a healing spirit. Sent to rejuvenate us all. You know, just do it out of danger. We're fortunate to have you as our friend. Friend? More than a friend. You are an irreplaceable asset to our cause. My. I'm sorry. Please, return to the battle. And may you be guided to safety. Sister Natasha. If I am injured, I will not be reckless. I will race to your side good. That's the proper way to do it. And I know that you will take care of me when that happens. Y yes, of course I will. Oh, but I hope that it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, she hopes you don't need her aid. Yeah, 
one of the more generic uh, romance lines. But that's good too. Mulder and Vanessa. Well, you do have time for that story I promised. Oh, goody goody. Certainly, Father. It was over ten years ago when the prince was just a child. There was a ceremony at the castle with a trick archer of sorts. Okay. A trick archer? You know, does cool things with the bow. Yes, he was a very famous and undeniably skilled archer from abroad. He was to shoot a tiny target that had been placed in the distance. But a trick archer would be more like if they tossed the target in the air and then he shot it there. Or like shot from behind his back or something. But that'd be really hard to do with a bow, I suppose. However, in the middle of the show, someone stopped him from shooting. Oh no, it wasn't. Yes, it was Prin young Prince Enos. He said, that's not far enough. Move the target back farther. Damn, that poor archer. Then he insisted on trying himself. <laughs> Jeez, bad, bad idea. That's so like him. Isn't it? King Hayden tried to stop him, but... Well, you know how he is. He doesn't listen to anyone. Oh yeah, Mulder's from their kingdom, isn't he? From Frelia. I actually forgot about that. And so... He became... And that explains why he knew his story from his childhood. And so... It became a contest between our prince and this foreign archer. So, what happened? First, they established the ground rules. Each person was to shoot at the target. If both arrows hit, they increased the range. They simply continued to move the target back until one person missed the mark. Sounds simple enough. Ah, but the two were evenly matched. Every shot was a perfect bullseye. Damn. Not easy to do. The crowd cheered and the target moved ever farther back. But then it came to the turning point. Foreign Archer said, This is no test. Let's move the target back more. Damn. One-upping each other. It seemed like a bravado, but the Archer actually had a clever tactic in mind. Clever? How so? They had been shooting for some time, and the Archer's arms had grown wary. Precision archery is far more taxing than the battlefield, you see. So even though he was a skilled archer, he was at the limits of his endurance. Okay, so it was his clever idea. He was still hitting the mark accurately, but his arm was quivering more and more. Everyone knew that the prince was on the verge of victory. I don't understand. They were shooting at the same target, shot for shot, right? Oh well, yeah, but the trick archer was uh, shooting for longer, I imagine. Why wouldn't moving the target make the, any difference? Yes, they were still shooting at the same target. However, the archer suggested that they move the target much farther away. Much farther than any child Innes' age could hope to loose an arrow to. Ah, I see. Oh, that is clever. But he's going to do it anyways. Even the archer, with his trained arms, was firing at his maximum range. In fact, he almost missed the target. Then, it was the prince's turn. And? It was clearly too far away for the young prince to hit the target. But his highness was undeterred. He drew his string and fired up into the sky. The arrow did not merely hit the target. No, it was a perfect bullseye. <laughs> Damn. So he was... Wonder. He must have uh, increased the angle a bit uh, to help his range. You see, the prince arced his shot to extend his range beyond its limits. Yep. To hit a target this way, this way requires incredible skill, but the prince did it. Yeah, that is not easy. I mean, regular target shooting isn't easy either, but especially with the bow. But, uh, Innes is a true prodigy. And then he turned to the archer and said, Shall we move, shall we move the target back further? 
Archer looked so crestfallen, he admitted defeat, and it was settled. Damn. Way to go, Innes. I gained some new respect for him. That's amazing. That it is. Thank you very much, Father. Father Mulder. That's incredible. I'm even more... 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 what? Oh, uh, no. Nothing. Do you have a crush on the prince? I'm glad you liked the story. Keep up the good work, Vanessa. Yes, sir. Alright, in round three. Let's go in reverse order this time. Uh, Vanessa and Mulder. I'm glad to see you well, Vanessa. You do your fellow Pegasus Knights proud. We are blessed to have you fighting at our side. You credit us warriors too much, Father. Without healers, we would be all we would all be lost. She's very, very, very correct. But without you guys, the healers would be lost too, so. Both are crucial components of our army. Nothing I say can tell you how much I value your presence here. We are all doing our part in this war. No need to thank me. I'm serious. Without your help, we would never survive these skirmishes. I am gratified by that. Thank you. Father, thank you again for the other day. Hmm? Oh, you made that story? It was a good story. Yes. Ah, you know, it remind me of myself 20 years back. Jeez, that's how old you are? Huh? I mean... I put her at about 20, so that puts you at, like... I, mean, I guess you have about the look of 40. I suppose. Not that I'm thinking about it. Oh, never mind. Good luck to you, Vanessa. I suppose you would have to be to have a mustache that fine. I don't know where this will lead, but I'm sure the prince knows your feelings. <laughs> You can't hide anything from him. Yeah. Father Mulder, I only aspire to be worthy of his greatness. I expect nothing in return. Are you sure? I think the bigger problem is I... Probably, she's probably of too low station to marry a prince. I mean, as a knight, she's probably some lower nobility, at the very least, but... Well... Well, do what you think is best for you. We all carry many burdens to country, family, duty, honor. However, we are all ultimately free to embrace or reject those burdens. If you find yourself in need of spiritual guidance, speak to me. Father Mulder, you're so kind. Thank you. I'm so grateful to have you on the field with me. Vanessa, we fight for the greater good. We fight for our country, well, for our friends, and for ourselves. You're right, Father. In so many things. He is a wise man. I wonder if he has any romantic endings. I'm gonna guess no. At least so far all of his have seemed... more... him giving counsel. Tasha and Seth. General Seth. Sister Natasha, how are you? Still rushing into battle? Well, thank you. And you? Or, no. Well, thank you. And you? Yes, I'm fine. But it's only because you've been beside me as I fought. You were always the one to heal my broken body. Hmm. You have that wrong, General. You're the, o you're the one constantly rescuing me. I mean, both can be true. When I'm surrounded by enemies, when I'm separated from the others. If you're separated from the others, I have not been doing my job. Sister Natasha, do you plan on returning to Grotto someday? Yes, I must return to the temple. Our people need my services. Is that what you really want? Hmm. General Seth, could anything sway you to stay in Renace instead? General Seth, what are you? He's about to propose. 
I'm sorry. I'm... Or are you not? You gonna fluster at the end? Or f Not fluster, uh... Stumble. I'll be more direct, Sister Natasha. When this war is over, would you... Come live with me? Oh! <laughs> but, Seth, I'm a cleric. I swore never to... I don't want to probably answer the question about uh, Mulder, then. I know you're a cleric. You've given your life over to a divine calling. Ah, but... Would you give that up? But would the everlasting not smile upon the love shared by its creations? Seth, I... Yes, I believe so. I vow upon the sacred oaths you have sworn that I will make you happy. Seth is a very good guy. I imagine he probably would. Seth, I hope you keep that promise. I'll wait for you until this war is finally at an end. I will keep my promise, Natasha. I will. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, one of the more generic romance paths, but not terrible right, by any means. Lower shell and... Uh, no, 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 not bar barrier. And Irika. Irika, please hold for a moment. What is it, Lower Shell? About what we were discussing earlier. I would not want you to get the wrong idea. I was not saying I, I was not saying I was lonely because my parents were dead. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm not that weak, you know. I've never even cried a thing about my parents. It's actually uh a little surprising, maybe. But everyone processes things differently. I know, Laura Shell. You're a very strong person. We are lucky to have you with us. I hope you do not think this all too sudden, but... Here, look at this. What's this? This ruby has been in Rostin for generations. It is a valuable gem. Oh. I'd be honored if... I'd like for you to have it. Damn. What? No, I couldn't. It's far too precious to accept. No, I mean it. Please, accept this as a gift. Did you give you did you get permission from your uncle to uh, give away national treasures like this? Here. I won't allow you to refuse. Oh, Rochelle. Thank you. I will treasure it. I so wish I had something to give you in return. You need to feel that way. Here, I have an idea. Once we've put an end to all the monstrosities in our lands, invite me to Renace. Does this plan please you? <laughs> yes, certainly. Of course. Then we are agreed. Now, you had better not go dying in battle on me. Until then, at any rate. Do I have your word? Yes. Let us both live along live long enough to look back on this time. I'm sure that when we do look back, we'll be as the best of friends. <laughs> well next for her is gonna be Ranek probably. And finally the big one. Ross and loot. Yo, loot. Hi, son of... I mean, Ross. <laughs> good job, loot. Hey, you remembered my name finally. Because I'm good. She is very good. Huh? Are you here to insult me today? Huh. When did he ever insult you? Where'd you get that from? You are as strange as ever. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love how she takes that as a compliment. It wasn't a compliment. Have you always been like this? Uh, yeah. Kinda. You mean, have I always been brilliant? Well, I've always been me, so yes. <laughs> I've been surrounded by books for as long as I can remember. You studied magic since you were a kid? Did you do anything for fun? Are you deaf? You, or just... You just said it. Of course. She studied magic when she was a kid. 
well, there's my monk watching habit. Oh, right. Her hobby of watching Archer. Huh? Never mind. How about your mother and father? I don't have any memory of my parents. But according to my grandmother, they are traveling from distant lands. Wait, so they abandoned you to go traveling? Or is that just what your grandmother told you and they're actually dead? Oh. So you have a grandmother? What is she like? She's like an elegant goldfish that's been sun-dried with a wildflower. <laughs> well, I'm trying to picture that. I have no idea what you're... I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, then. So long. <laughs> I swear. Hey! Hey, loot! Yes? You may be a great mage, but you don't seem to be physically strong. Eh, she's not. So, from now on, well, I'll be at your side to protect you. Well, that's very kind. But you know, that's the more... But you know that the more likely scenario is that I'll be protecting you. She does? I think you'll protect each other. You're both very strong in your own ways. That's not what you're supposed to say. You're just supposed to say yes. Okay. Yes. Man. I might not seem that tough now. Someday I will grow up to be a man as strong as my dad. You wait and see. Well, you're already stronger, so... Okay. I look forward to see it. I look forward to it. But I won't get my hopes too high. Disappointment is a cruel mistress. Hmm. <laughs> you... I'll show you. I might... Yeah. I might make them my, uh... Official end support for my actual mainline run. Alright, well, off to the next set. Okay, here we are. First round of our next set of supports. Let's start with Sirene and Molder. Father Molder, you look tired. We've been asking so much of you lately. We do. We work our healers to the bone. Don't worry about me. I'm rather more worried about you, Cyrene. You had only just been transferred to this unit when we left for earlier. I'd imagine it must be odd not having any familiar faces around. Well, she has at least two familiar faces. Vanessa, you know, her freaking sister. And then Kyle, who, you know, she knew. Not to mention, Tana and Enos. I've already learned everyone's name and field of specialization. Don't worry about me. Impressive. And you, for that matter. You're from... You're from Frelia. You've been paying attention. To beat your enemy? Know your allies. That's true, it's important to know everyone. Everyone's strengths and weaknesses. Without knowing the skills of your own men, you can never win a war. I don't want to die just because I didn't know what to expect from my troops. I was worried about how well you were integrating into our group. You seem to have matters well in hand, though. I'm proud of you, Cyrene. If you don't, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me anytime. Thank you, Father Mulder. I do appreciate your thoughtfulness. Hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. It's always nice when they're familiar with each other. Those are usually, or often, the more interesting supports. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. I mean, look at Ross and Loot, for example. There's a good mix of interesting supports all around. All right, on that note, let's go to Vanessa and Loot. Pegasus! <laughs> Do you like the Pegasus? You must be Loot. And who are you? I'm Vanessa. I'm Captain of Frelia's Pegasus Knights. What's that? Wait, you're not higher ranked than Serene, are you? And this here is Titania. We're both pleased to meet you, Lou. Aw, oh, the Pegasus. The proud winged horse. You know, they, are they, are, they only attach to someone they accept as their master. 
And did you know that pegasi fly by kicking the air, not by flapping their wings? I did not know that, actually. Very interesting, Loot. It's a common misconception, but wings are mainly used for gliding. Yes, as Captain, I learned all this so long ago. Plus, if they flap their wings constantly, no one would be able to ride them. No? In some countries, the word Pegasus means fountain or ocean. I also did not know that. Different cultures have different stories about, uh, about the creation of, Peg of the Pegasus. In one legend, there was a monster who could turn anyone into, into stone. The Medusa? Actually, in this case, we actually do have monsters who can do that. When the monster died, its blood seeped into the ground. There, a Pegasus was born. Interesting. You are very knowledgeable. I know. Well, how <laughs> matter of fact she is always, she always is about that. Well, thank you for the lesson. I'm glad we're on the same team. It was nice meeting you. Yes, nice to meet you, Titania. <laughs> well, it's always fun to learn all of Loot's little quirks. Apparently she's really into Pegasus. To Pegasi. I'm Vanessa. Oh, she knows. She wasn't talking to you. <laughs> oh man, that's great. All right, Seth and Cormeg. You're pretty good with this with a spear. So are you, Cormeg. Thank you. I don't think I've introduced myself. I'm the leader of the Knights of Renace. I know you. Of course I know. Of course I know you. You're General Seth, the Silver Knight. Oh, the Silver Knight. Precious metal instead of a precious stone. Yes, that's right. And you are Cormeg, the renowned wyvern rider of Grotto. If the legendary Silver Knight knows my name, I can't be doing too bad, huh? Eh, yeah. Pretty skilled yourself, Cormeg. You and your brother, Glenn, are famous even among the Knights of Renace. We have no wyvern riders in Renace. Your stories are favorites among the men. Hmm. It's a shame that Glenn had to die. I've been watching your combat style since you joined our forces. Oh, is that so? Well, tell me. What do you think? I'd love a chance to spar with you. Not a chance. I can never beat you. Well, that's not the point of sparring, Cormeg. It's to improve yourself. But if you're fighting someone who doesn't challenge you, what's the point? So you say, but I can see in your eyes that you'll never accept failure. Heh. <laughs> but all this time, I thought you were just another loyal dullard. <laughs> Jeez. That's a little mean. Guess I was wrong. We should chat some more sometime. I mean, he's very loyal, but he's not a dullard. Not even close. Yes, I think I'd like that. Perhaps once things have eased up. Looking forward to it, Cormeg. Sure thing. Hmm. All right. And finally, Erica and Tana, which we actually got the first two before, but we never got the third, and I will be good to refresh ourselves on the first two. Ah, Erica. Shall we ride together for uh, a while? Tana, you seem well. And yes, I'd appreciate the company. I feel I should apologize. I'm afraid I haven't been very much help to you, Irika. Right. She was always uh, very self-conscious about this. To be honest, I'm still in training and not quite battle ready. Perhaps you'd fare better if I were not traveling with you. I mean, even if I'm not putting you in the battle this time, this time around, uh, I still enjoy traveling with you. Tana, that's not true at all. You've been a great help to us. I've seen you in action. I know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Irika. <laughs> feel so foolish now. Why is that? I look on you as a sister, Irika. And yet, even though we're the same age, you seem so much more mature. Hardly. And as you even gave me the courage to leave the castle. I 
wanted to be out on my own, like you, to pattern my life, my life after yours. I'm simply glad that we are friends. Yeah. Now let's never end up like, oh man, like a certain other uh, friend of hers. Me too, Tana. I'm glad you came. You helped to remind me of better times. <laughs> it's nice. Alright. Off to the next round. Alright. Our next round of supports. Um, let's start with Luke, or Tana and uh, Irika. Oh, brother. I'm going to get you for this, brother. What's wrong, Tana? What did Enos do? Has something happened to Enos? My brother is so cruel. Listen to what he said to me. He told me that I was just in everyone's way. He said I should just go back home to Frelia. Oh, dear. <laughs> that is Enos's, uh... Oh, he's not one to mince words. He... And he... It's kind of lacking in tact. I'm so depressed. He's always like that, too. He just makes fun of me and insults me and teases me. I hate him so much. Ah, oh, you don't. Tana, your brother has a strange way of showing his concern. But he is concerned about you. You can see that, can't you? Yes, but... Even my brother gets angry at me when I put myself at risk. Even for a good cause. Your brother is harsh and rough of speech, but he doesn't want you to get hurt. I mean, I would hope you would want- we wouldn't want your brothers to get hurt either. Well, I suppose you're right. Why don't we go speak with him later? I'll be right beside you. Ah, uh, alright. But, Irika, I still envy you. Me? You and Ephraim are so- As so close. I think that's supposed to be our. You and Ephraim are so close. Understand one another. It must be so nice. I wish my brother and I shared that kind of connection. Well, we are twins, you know. I think that makes us slightly different from normal siblings. I would imagine so. But you two never fight or anything, do you? I mean, I wouldn't imagine being twins would prevent that. How do you two maintain such a close relationship? I... Well... Isn't that normal for twins? I... I... Don't think so. Alright. Now... Let's go... Seth and Cormag. Part 2. Hey, Seth. Ah, Cormay, good timing. I had something I wanted to ask you. Your family, are they all soldiers? Why do you ask? Well, your skill with the spear is amazing. Have you trained since you were a child? No, I come from a long line of dirt poor farmers. I wielded a plow, not a spear. Huh. It's impressive both you and your brother went on to become two of uh, Grotto's greatest wyvern knights. When we were kids, Glenn and I had to chase birds and animals from our field. <laughs> we used sticks and stones, and I think that helped with our aim, to be honest. Is that so? So why did you join the army? It's a funny story, really. The Emperor's caravan passed through our village one day. My brother and I watched the glorious procession from top of the tree, or from the top of a tree. Then, a stray dog started to harry the horses pulling the Emperor's carriage. Uh, yikes. Hopefully they didn't just, you know, kill it. We threw rocks to drive off the mutt, but some soldiers decided to arrest us. Oh, oh they thought you were throwing rocks at the Emperor. Why? You were trying to help. Yes, well, we didn't just hit the dog. We got a few of the soldiers as well. Don't... Please don't hit dogs with rocks. <laughs> so, aha. Uh -huh. So, what happened next? 
Well, the Emperor shows up in the room the soldiers had thrown us. He looks around and this very calm but stern voice says to the soldiers, What are you men doing? Resting mere children. They were trying to help. Then he invites us to dine, with, uh, dine at his table. And it was a luxurious feast, I tell you. Man, he was a... Sounds like he was a really good emperor. It is such a tragedy that he was basically dead before we ever got to meet him. Now, we were just kids. We lacked the basic courtesies. We were just filthy. And we kept droning on about the most idiotic things. Chores, the village. But he listened to us intently. And that fatherly smile never left his face. I can see why all the um, original generals were just so loyal to him. Even in the face of him clearly going mad. It's just, he was such a good person. And he said, You lads are good at driving off dogs with stones. Your skills are wasted in the fields. Let's see how you fare with spears instead. That's how you were recruited? Exactly. It's difficult to ignore such a commanding presence. But, the Emperor changed. I still can't believe what's happened. I wasn't born into a family of knights, so it was a given that I should be... Oh no, I was born into a family of knights, so it was a given that I should be one too. I trained in spear and sword, I studied chivalry and swore my oaths of fealty. Because of my hard work, late King Fado treated me like a second son. It's funny, you and I are from different worlds, but we share the same loyalties. Yeah, they are a little bit alike, aren't they? True. But King Fedo is dead now. And my Emperor is the one who killed him. My Emperor is as good as dead to me. Well, that makes you feel better, which I'm not sure it would. He was, that wasn't the Emperor. I already serve a new Lord. Cormac, you'll find a ruler worthy of your loyalties too. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> they have interesting conversations. They really are a lot alike. Um, let's see, was it Lute? Yeah, Lute and Vanessa. Horsey, Pegasus, Titania. <laughs> Stop talking to the horse, to the Pegasus. Titania? Um, no. I meant Vanessa, right? <laughs> no, you didn't. You totally meant the horse. I'm happy to know that I've made such a strong impression on you, Loot. So, what can I do for you? It's common knowledge that Pegasi have strong resistance to magic. That it is. <laughs> you are going to make the Pegasus Knight board. Talking about Pegasi, aren't you? I developed a new counterattack to that power, but it still needs refining. What is it, wind magic? I guess what I'm saying is, can I try it out on Titania? Oh god, no. No. What? Oh jeez, loot, no. What? Uh, no! Of course not! I was joking. I, I'm, I'm scared that I actually could not tell that you were joking. It just completely made sense coming from loot. <laughs> oh, you said it with such a straight face. Definitely had me fooled. Thank you. It's so sweet of you to say. It wasn't a compliment. I love the recurring theme there. Of loot uh, taking harsh words as compliments. Besides, you really don't seem like someone who has much of a sense of humor. Is that right? Yes. It seems like your magic is the real thing. I mean... She does have a sense of humor in her own ways. Because I think the uh, spider prank on Arter was supposed to be a joke. If I'm remembering right. It's a horrifying sense of humor, but it is a sense of humor. 
when you defeated the enemy the other day. I saw a sharp flash of magic from above. Gee, I wonder why that happened. Cuz... You're good? Why, yes! You are 100% correct! <laughs> Loves people acknowledging her. Prodigyness. For once. Oof, backhanded compliment. My point is, we don't have enough mages in Frelia, so we're counting on you. When I was growing up, I always wanted to be a Pegasus Knight like my sister. I was also interested in magic, but I just didn't have the talent. Well, you are a great, Peg a great Pegasus Knight, so it's worked out fine. Besides, I am also interested in becoming a Pegasus Knight. Boo. A magic-wielding Pegasus Knight, now that would be fun. Why are you in your training? Actually, wasn't... No, I don't think there was a class like that in any... What? No, 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 no. I'm thinking of uh, three houses. Constance became a flying magic Pegasus Knight. Where are you in your training? I'm at 98 levels out of 158 levels total. <laughs> what? Wow. What are these levels? That's very impressive. It doesn't even question it. Anyway, let's just do our best out there, shall we? Of course. See, I would have never discovered some of these. It's these gems that make going through every single support worth it. And it just would not be the same without seeing their portraits and everything. Just reading them. Cyrene. You said you'd already learned everything about our little band. Did anyone of Frelia go over the details with you before you left? No, father. Things were rather hectic in Frelia before we left, as you know. Everything I've learned, I've learned on the job, so to speak. People confide in me, and I learned by observation. Interesting. So, even though you're new, they know they can confide in you. Yes. The ladies seem most comfortable speaking to me. I understand. Even a man of the cloth is still, at heart, a man. Are you saying they're too attracted to her, or too intimidated by her beauty? Something like that? It must reassure them to know that there is another woman to whom they can speak. Oh, 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 oh. I misinterpreted what you're trying to say. The reason they go to her instead of to Mulder. I see. There are many women among us. If I cannot be father to them, please care for them as a mother. <laughs> With all respect, father, I refuse to minister to their needs as a mother would. <laughs> Fair enough. I am still young and unworthy. I prefer to speak to them as a sister. Well, well. That's good, too. <laughs> yes, of course. Please, excuse me. Help them, then, as a sister would. Yes, father. Now, may I have a word with you? As their sister. What do you need? I beg your pardon? Me? What? Has someone complained about me? <laughs> well... I'll let you know the day after next new moon. What? What did you do, Mulder? Must I wait until then? Is it so terrible that I needs... Must... Wait, what? Is it so terrible that I needs must prepare myself for the news? Rest easy, father. It's only a suggestion, not criticism. <laughs> I'm very curious what this is gonna be. Hmm? What could it be? Why has to wait till the new moon? Yeah, whatever. All right, final set for these guys. Let's start with Seth and Cormag. Can I have a word with you, Cormag? Oh, Seth, of course. What can I do for you? I've been thinking about your story. I've come to a decision. Oh? Hmm? What are you talking about? story about your childhood, of course, but... Cormac, listen. 
As a general of the Knights of Renace, I'd like to offer you a post. What? You want me to join the Knights of Renace? Yes, exactly. I've been watching you fight, and I've been thinking about this for some time. Since we've been speaking, I've seen more than just your fighting prowess. I've seen that you're a strong and noble person as well. You're a man I would risk my life fighting beside. Prince Ephraim will be a great king. Would you fight for uh, would you fight for him with me? I really appreciate it. Thanks, Seth. But Grotto is my home. I can't trade loyalties to Renesla just just like that. Yeah, that's I think what he said with Tana as well. I knew you would say that. Emperor Vigard is my only lord. Emperor Vigard is dead, though. My duty now is to correct the mistakes he has made. Oh, well, all right then. It's fair enough. That's why I'm here. I hope you can understand. Yes, of course. Still, I'm glad that I met you. Same here, Seth. Now, let's get this war over with, shall we? Yes. When it's done, we'll get together and tell some stories. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be surprised that that's how that ended. Alright. Blue, we'll say blue. Tana! Erika, are you alright? You guys were gonna go see Enos, weren't you? I am. Thank you, Tana. I always feel better when you're around. I've been wondering. Erica, do you think I've grown stronger? Well, not in this life, maybe, but in your previous one, for sure. I mean, stronger than uh, when I was cooped up in the castle, at least. Yes, of course you have. Really? Tana, you should have more confidence in your abilities. If I had to rely on my own blade alone, I would not survive. Very true. Yep, we are a team. Every piece of our team is critical. But with you around, I know I can keep fighting. You think? I guess I'm still not sure. Still, it is nice to hear you say that. Arika, we'll get through this. The two of us. And when we do, let's sit together and just relax. Sure, Tana. But first, we'll have to apologize to King Hayden. Oh. Father. I wonder if he's still mad. That's right, you ran out on him. He explicitly forbade you from following after us, and yeah. He, well, I think he'll just be happy to see you alive and well. But then you'll also be grounded for a lifetime, so... Well, we'll see. Yes, you probably should. Say, Irika, could you... Of course, I understand. You and I will speak to him together. Don't you worry. <laughs> Aw, best of friends. They are such BFFs. I love it. Cyrene and Mulder. So... Last night was a new moon, and that means today is the day. <laughs> You've been super excited for this. I, eagerly, I'm eagerly anticipating what she has to say as well. I've been going mad wondering, Cyrene. What is your suggestion? Ah, right you are, Father. It is indeed the promised day. Well then, on behalf of everyone, I have two words for you. God, the anticipate, anticipation is killing me. Father Mulder? I want to assume those were not the two words. Y yes? Oh, happy birthday! God! I. That, that actually caught me off guard. Oh my god. That is somehow one of the most sweet of all the supports. Oh my god! 
<laughs> Happy birthday, Mulder. What? Birthday? Oh, oh yes. Why, today is my birthday, isn't it? But it is a fine tradition to celebrate one's birthday, Father. In a war, uncertainty surrounds us at every mo- uh, as Sarah- <laughs> Jeez, this is uh, throwing me. I don't know why, I, just, I, I love it so much. Uncertainty, uncertainty surrounds us every moment of every day. Instead of worrying about tomorrow, let us celebrate life today. That should encourage us all to keep going, wouldn't you say? God, everyone loves Mulder, don't they? He's like... He really is a good guy. Yes, indeed. Someone everyone can go to for support. To share the joys of life is very important. Thank you, Cyrene. In this chaos, I would have forgotten my own birthday. You exhaust yourself caring for others, but you pay no attention to yourself. I mean... If I was left on my own, I would practically forget my birthday sometimes. We are all so grateful to you, Father. So many different people came up to me to ask how we could show you that gratitude. You are a man of great virtue and an inspiration to us all. I am touched. At my age, I thought all my happy birthdays were well behind me. <laughs> Aww. I'm a little embarrassed at that. You must remember to take care of yourself, Father. Yes, take care of yourself like you take care of everyone else. And thank you. And that was just wonderful. Ah, so sweet. I really like that one. All right. Oh, man. Vanessa and Loot. Loot, did you know this? Oh, man, Vanessa coming to her with the trivia. The wings of a thousand pegasi are an incredibly potent aphrodisiac. <laughs> what? Well, that came out of left field. I, I, I didn't know that. Okay, I really need Titania's help. Uh, is there someone you're trying to seduce? Salute. Um, wait, wait! I was just kidding. Hush, Titania. Hush. I was joking. <laughs> you're trying to pluck her her feathers I see I was um kidding as well <laughs> oh, sure you were loot who was it you wanted to seduce I am very curious is it Vanessa maybe Arthur someone else hehe <laughs> Consider it payback. But, Lou, I never thought you would try to steal the wings right off her back. Guess the battlefield is a lonely place. <laughs> you know, I'm often told that I need to loosen up and not be so serious. I'd always tried to be like my sister. She's very strong. It's both a knight and a person. I have tried too hard. Yes, that is exactly what your sister would say to you, too. Stop trying to be too much like her. But, it's so much easier to loosen up with people like you around. Thanks. I see. When I'm with you, I can relax and just be myself. Yeah, I guess uh, loot is non-judgmental for the most part. She just... takes things as they are. I guess that's the way it seems. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> that was a compliment! Jeez, you are a tough one. Gotta love her. Loot is, uh... Especially with after her all her... After a good number of her supports. Is actually an easy contender for one of my favorite characters in this game. When this war is over, would you like to come visit me in Frelia? You could ride a Pegasus if you'd like. Oof, you drive a hard bargain there. It's, I think that's too tempting to pass up. That would be an illuminating experience. But I have to start reading up on Pegasi behavior now, so I won't get thrown off. I don't think that'll help you that much. You should probably build up your uh, 
grip strength? Or something. Do they, do they like carrots? Of course, or maybe apples? Well, I don't know about that. I'll let you do your research. <laughs> I can't spoil her fun. I must go now. See you later, loot. Yes, Vanessa. I like that one too. <laughs> I'm doubtful they have a shared ending though. Right now I'm leaning towards having her uh, support with Ross this time around. Alright, our final set for the day. Let's start with Enos and Irika. Irika? I know this might seem sudden, but I decided I must protect you for a while. <laughs> it, you're, you're all correct, it does seem a little sudden. What? What do you mean by that? I was in a difficult situation at Cursino. Yeah, you kind of were. I must admit that I owe you much for your help that day. You really do. I, I see. So now, I've decided to protect you in battle. All right, so you want to make up for, uh, pay her back for protecting you, fair enough. I don't know how to say this, but it is unacceptable that I remain indebted to you. Oh, you and your full pride. Regardless, you can count on me. No arrow can reach all enemies, but I guarantee your safety. Will you accept my oath? Hmm. <laughs> er, sure. I accept. Thank you, Princinus. Eh? More guardians is always nice. Follow me then. Oh, wait a moment, Enus. You're an archer. Wouldn't it make more sense if you stayed behind me? Yeah, you're you're her bodyguard, but you protect her from afar. From her side. Silly Enus. Alright. Marissa and Colm. Hey, you. Have you seen a scary-looking woman? Uh, no. Scary-looking woman? Is she your sister? <laughs> no! I don't have any sisters. The woman I'm talking about is was beautiful, but also very scary. It's totally gonna be Marissa. Have you seen someone who fits that description? I don't think so. Beautiful, but very scary. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not exactly sure either. I just heard from one of Garrick's mercenaries that there is a woman sword fighter here. Definitely Marissa. Apparently she's very talented and was hired for an unbelievable sum. A woman sword fighter? Rumor is uh, that if you speak to her without thinking, She's likely to attack you out of nowhere. <laughs> what unfounded slander. Marissa would never just attack you out of nowhere. Is that so? Maybe her face is scarred from fighting. Yeah, that's probably it. She's beautiful, but has a very sad past behind that scar. And that's why she's so scary. A scarred face? A sad past? Hmm, doesn't know anyone like that. Or maybe it's because her lover was killed. She's trying to avenge him. I think people are just uh, intimidated by her uh, cold exterior. She's very, um, she's uh, not very outwardly expressive. That seems equally plausible, doesn't it? Anyway, if you see her around, do you tell her that, uh, that I was looking for her? See ya. <laughs> I mean, she's got the beautiful part down, but scary, I mean. Clearly, not. Uh, she's not the person. Well, I'm the only female sword fighter here. I guess he was looking for me. <laughs> he is so clueless. Yes. But you're not scary. Alright, Ford and Vanessa. I don't know much about Ford yet. What's that down there? Whoa, Titania. Whoa, girl, let's stop here. Be scared of Ford. Oh. Are you hurt? Are you alright? Oh, he's sleeping. Zzzz. Huh? 
You have got to be kidding me. Sleeping while a war is waging? Bold warrior, it's time to wake up. Hey, lazy bones, get up. Shnargoblon. Oh boy, let's go, Titania. It's clear that Mr. Slug here needs his beauty rest. Oh no, he's awake now. Huh? Someone say something? <laughs> oh, Ford. That's a nice little intro there. Alright, Garcia and Mamie. Sir? Sir Garcia? Don't come near me right now, Naomi. Oh! He has such an intense look on his face. I I'm sorry. I was just wondering what you were doing. I'm preparing myself for the battle. Please, don't come near me right now. Trying to get psyched? Yes. To prepare myself for battle, I visualize the enemy in front of me. Then, during battle, I can focus all my attention on them. Well, don't get tunnel vision, though. If you want to survive this war, you must focus all your attention on the enemy. I, I see. Please excuse me now. Wait. Y yes sir? I apologize for yelling at you. That must be how... That must be how he became such a brilliant warrior. I... Uh, think not. I think that was probably training and uh... Yeah. I must go focus now. Training and experience. Alright, round two, here we go. Start with Naomi and Garcia this time. Naomi! That gauntlet! Um, was it her? This was what, uh, Colm went to get back, wasn't it? Y yes? That gauntlet! The one embroidered with the gold falcon! Huh? Oh, this? My late grandfather gave it to me. It was too big for me, so I resized it to fit my hand. Aww. He was the one who taught me how to use a bow. This is a keepsake he gave me. Is your grandfather's name Zethla? An old battle buddy? No in the world? Did you know him? Of course. He was the master archer. He was known as Single Arrow Zethla. Damn. He had amazing accuracy and could shoot any target moving or still with one shot. No second arrow for Zethla was what people would say. Renace tried to recruit him many times. Now that I think about it, when Grandpa went hunting, he would take only one arrow with him. That's cool and all, but what if he ran into multiple uh, dangerous critters out there that he needed to defend himself against? Or multiple bandits trying to hurt him. I think, uh, he probably should have taken more, even if he only needed one. Me? I always took many arrows. So, it was true. He never did join the army, even though he re even though recruiters did come by often. He said that it wasn't in his nature. Hmm. <laughs> Skilled with a bow, but doesn't want to use it against people. I respect that. I know. In fact, I visited him once when I was young. He was wearing the gauntlet that day, and it left an impression. I see. Renace is such a big country, I never would have thought that you met him, or that you knew him. It's a small world. Mm, indeed. I can't believe Single Arrow Zethla's granddaughter is fighting in this war. I'm encouraged by this fact. I'm counting on you, Naomi. <laughs> Though, very few enemies she can only use one arrow against. What? You're counting on me? Yes. Um, I'm happy to hear that. I I'll do my best to not let you- not to let you down. Good. Then let's go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Something tells me their final one's gonna be almost like a father-daughter thing. Alright, board. And Vanessa. Oh, 
Look who's actually awake today. You must be one of Frelia's Pegasus Knights. I'm Vanessa. Yeah, that's right, Vanessa. I'm Ford. Nice to meet you. By the way, what do you mean by me being awake? Oh, she caught you napping. Just the other day, I was flying by and saw you lying on the ground. I thought you were hurt, but when I got closer, I saw that you were just sleeping. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was so disgusted that I just left you there. But then I started to worry about enemies spotting you, so I went back. Oh. By the time I got back to where you were, you were already gone. To catch them off guard that way and then attack. That's my strategy. No. You were, uh, you would have been dis If she was an enemy, you definitely would have been killed. I seriously doubt that. <laughs> oh. But anyway, thanks for your concern. You really don't stress her plan much, do you? So different from our prince. Prince of Frelia? Ah, oh, you mean Prince Innes. Yeah. I think he's almost 100% stress. But I'm sure he's quite the ladies' man. I bet you have a crush on him, too. And cue uh, flustered denial. You're blushing, so I must have hit a nerve. I, I don't! I didn't say anything. A romance between a prince and his knight. What a scandal. What intrigue. <laughs> it's alright, though. You can love anyone you like. You must have lots of competition, seeing how he is a prince. I mean, does it really count as competition if she doesn't stand a chance? Or maybe this world, uh... Princes and princesses can be with who they want, regardless of station. It's much easier to date someone you can be yourself around. Someone like, say, me would be ideal for you. What do you say? Oh, damn. He's just a, a flirt, isn't he? Um, let's go, Titania. We've wasted enough time here. Boof. Shot down right out the gate. You don't have to run away like that. Okay, see you. Okay, see you. Watch out for those archers. <laughs> All right. Coleman Marissa. Gonna figure it out yet? Oh, hi, Marissa. Sorry for what I said the other day. I figured out that you were the scary woman I was talking about. <laughs> yes, yes, she was. I'm Colm. Nice to meet you. Okay. So, what did you want from me? Oh, nothing special. I just wanted to meet the famous swordswoman. Fair enough. I was going to challenge you to a match. Bad idea. But I've seen you fight and know how good you are. You'd beat me senseless. Yeah, he does have a brain in that head of his, apparently. I'll accept a match with you anytime. Well, I don't know how else to say this. You're scaring me. Scaring? Yeah, it sounds funny, but you never look at the enemy. I mean, you don't care about the enemy at all. I mean, if they come to her, she'll kill them. I have no idea what you're talking about. Speak English. I... <laughs> funny that there's English in this world without, you know, the English. <laughs> I mean, even when the enemy is right in front of you, you aren't even looking at him. You're fighting something else. Something else? Not that smart. I don't know how much about swords. So I can't say exactly who or what it is you really are, you're really fighting. I see. Um, what I mean to say is good luck in all your battles. Um, that's it. See you later. Way to be exceedingly awkward there, Colm. The enemy I'm really fighting? Hmm. I'm curious what enemy he thinks she's really fighting or what answer they come to there. What are you doing? What is it now, Enos? I told you I was going to protect you. Right? And yet, whenever an enemy shows himself, rush in and attack. Right. So do your job and protect her. Everyone's going to think you're the one protecting me. Well, I can't help with your image problems, Enos. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a you problem. You're an archer. Well, I have to fight up close. 
That is unacceptable. I said that I would protect you, and I was being quite sincere. Enes, we can't afford to hold men... Uh, we can't afford, afford to hold people back. And I appreciate that. It's nice to know that when I cross swords with the enemy, you're never far from me. The, your bow close at, close at hand. Irika, you're so kind. You're so different from that brother of yours. He really does not get along well with that from... No, not as much as you think. Maybe you only see him as a warrior, as competition. But he's a fine and gentle man, capable of great compassion. If you say so, I suppose I cannot doubt it if it comes from your lips. Quintinus, please try to befriend my brother. I know you would want this as well. I don't know why you dislike him. When I'm alone with him, he's so kind. Maybe it's jealousy? Forgive me. I can bear no more of this talk. When I see you look that way, I feel only jealousy for this Ephraim. Ah, yeah. What? He is a hard man to forgive. Perhaps there is only one way to settle this. Don't challenge him to a duel. Prince Enos? I don't know, what are you gonna do? Gonna challenge Ephraim for her hand. For her hand. All right, final round. Enos and Irika. How are you gonna propose, Enos? Irika, forgive the intrusion. I must speak to you at once. Prince Enos? What is it? First, just listen to me. Is there anyone who lays claim to your heart? <laughs> he is uh, doing this in exactly the way I would expect a uh, stereotypical romantic noble to do this. What? No, there's nobody like that. I see. Now let me speak frankly. Irika. It seems I have fallen in love with you. What? This is no place for jokes, Enos. Why would you say something like that? This is no joke. I am absolutely serious. These... Yeah, he doesn't know how to joke. These feelings surprise me as well. I mean, they're not that surprising. I don't know what to do. Fighting at your side all this time, the emotion just exploded within me. I love you. I could not bear to see you in the arms of another. But Prince Enos, I, I... No, Irika, do not answer now. I have not yet bested Ephraim. I have not earned the right to woo you. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. He's got to challenge Ephraim. What? Why are you bringing my brother into this? With a man like him around, I can see why you show no interest in suitors. Has she had any suitors? She's still pretty young. If I prove myself his superior, he will surely accept my hand. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Ephraim and her... I, I would guess probably like 16, but maybe 18 at the most. Maybe even a little younger, honestly. It's always hard to tell in these games. If I fail... I release any claim to your affection. It's such a silly reason not to be together if you two people actually care for themselves for each other, but ah, nobles. But I swear it on the depth of my love that I will destroy that man. Please don't. She cares for her brother. Irika, I expect your answer then. That's all I have to say. Enus! And... Variating man! Why does he have to be so... Yeah. <laughs> oh. I am considering him as one of Irika's uh, endgame supports as well. We'll see how her other ones go. I want ones that actually have, you know, shared endings. Not all of them do. And I think that one probably will. Alright, uh, Ford and Vanessa. I 
think I misunderstood you. Yeah? So you understand me now? I guess so. You've been working for me from behind this... Wait, what? You've been working for her? You've been working for me from behind the scenes, haven't you? Or haven't you? Yes, but don't worry. I'm used to that sort of misunderstanding. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, of course. So, how about all that other stuff? What do you mean? Well, he said he wants to, to be together with him. Am I too far a cry from a prince? <laughs> you are pretty far a cry from a prince, that is true. Um, I felt an energy. Energy? What are you talking about? Everyone has a different type of energy. Some energies can heal hearts, others spread courage. When you first saw me sleeping, I was dreaming of running across a field. I felt this warm energy engulfing me, blowing across my face like a summer wind. I think that was sh her shouting at you. It must have been your energy that made me feel that way. My energy? Would you like to feel my energy too? It's... That's, uh... All right. Um, I'll certainly think about it. It's about my take as well. Wonderful. I'll be waiting for your answer, Vanessa. It's a really weird proposal there, Ford. Ends up turning him down. Uh, let's go with Colm and Marissa next. Colm. Hi, Marissa. I was thinking about what you were saying the other day. Even about not fighting the enemy in front of you, but something else? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. What about it? Do you want to know what I'm really fighting with? I am very curious. Huh? Uh, yeah. If you want to tell me? Sure. What I'm really fighting with is... It was hanging. My father. Huh. I wasn't sure what to expect, but that certainly wasn't it. Do tell, what kind of relationship with your father did you have? Your father? Well, to be more precise, his shadow. Was he a swordsman also? He was one of the most famous swordsmen in Jahana. He was also a mercenary. I see why you're so good. Was he someone you could never best, or something like that? Ever since I was a child, my father taught me how to live as a mercenary. Since you were a kid, the harsh conditions of Johanna breed strength and ruthlessness. Yeah. The only way to survive is by being a mercenary. Oh. My father is my parent, my teacher, and above all, a mountain I must conquer. A mountain? Once I conquer the mountain, I can accomplish anything I want. I must be... I must be a... big mountain. So, where are you on the mountain? A third of the way up? Halfway up? Or can you see already see the summit? Well, she said she was level 98 or something like that out of 158, so... You know, a little over halfway up. I'm only at the base. Oh. You still have a long way to go, huh? Yes. I guess those are exponential levels, then. I don't even know where the uh, summit is. Well. Well, then. You don't know how long it will take, do you? I'll just keep climbing. Even if it takes me forever. Oh. I see. Well. Good luck. I'm sure you'll make it to the top. Yes. Someday. For sure. You're... a nice guy. <laughs> oh, please, you're embarrassing me. Hmm. We learned a nice, interesting little bit of... characterization there for Marissa. Motivation for her. I like that. Alright, Garcia? Naomi? Naomi, I'm sorry if I startled you yesterday. Huh? Oh, you mean when you were preparing yourself for the battle? I mean... Are you sure this shouldn't have been the second support? 
No, I was just surprised by your enthusiasm for this war. I used to be like this all the time. I was always preoccupied with battles to the point of neglecting my family. And now, here I am, back on the battlefield. With your family. I'm sure my wife is somewhere sighing, rolling around in the grave. Oh no, Sir Garcia. I'm sure your wife understood how you felt. I think it's hard to understand when you are not a soldier. In times like this, you have to fight to stay alive. You lost family too, didn't you? Yes, but I can't keep crying. I have to be strong and keep going. Naomi. You quit the army and lived in a mountain village with Ross because... Because Renée was not at war, didn't you? Yes. You don't seem to be the type of person who enjoys fighting for its own sake. I think you know the emptiness and pain of war more than anyone else. I can see that just by looking at you. Um, I'm sorry if I'm being presumptuous. No, Naomi. Thank you. You are very perceptive. You'll make some lucky guy very happy someday. <laughs> oh, um, this is kind of embarrassing. Don't be embarrassed. Oh, by the way, please take this. What is it? Oh, this hair comb is lovely. Aw, who did that belong to? I bought this for my wife when I was still in the Renee's army, but never had the chance to give it to her. Aw, that must have so much sentimental value for you. Sir Garcia. I buried her with some of the things I had brought back. I don't know why, but I couldn't bring myself to bury this, though. I don't need it. What would I do with it? You'd better you'd make better use of it. It will give you a reason to keep using that mirror of yours, too. <laughs> oh, you know about the mirror, then. That was, I'm pretty sure it might have been the mirror that she had to go back for. I was one of those. Where that comb went back for. Sir Garcia, this is too much. Thank you. I will take good care of it. All right, and with that, we'll uh, end this again. It's been pretty consistently 30 minutes per set of... per set of eight times three, so... by my calculation, we'll have four or five more of these episodes. <laughs>